All right, lads, back at it again. Let's jump right into it. Sorry about the uh, gap in production there. We've had a bit of construction going on at the house and whatever. Frankly, you know what it's like when you're first day back at a physical job. You just feel absolutely rooted. All right, revelations. Start of the day at the palace. Briefing on the woman's rights situation. Got anything else going on? Nope. All right. Uh, Luchin and I were on our way to my office. I was holding a mug of coffee in one hand and a folder of various documents in the other. As we turned a corner, Luchin spoke. The Ashraf anniversary is coming up soon, the most important day for the Bludish populace. Watani Ashraf is one of their symbols, as you know. Your presence at this event would show your desire for a more unified swordland. We will reap the benefits if you decide to go, I'm sure. Hmm. Right, eh? I don't want to cause any further division among swords because of this. As I said, I believe this is an opportunity to portray yourself as a unifier, not a divider. We rounded another corner to reach the last corridor leading to my office. Luchin suddenly stopped in front of the, one of the doors. The plaque that once said Vice President Peter Victor had been removed. The door was halfway open and I could see a few workers moving boxes around the room. One of them saw us, bowed his head and changed the name tag on the door to Vice President Lucien Galada. Another handyman dropped a heavy looking box on the desk. A crunching sound was heard from within. Be careful with that. Mr President, this move requires my personal attention. We shall discuss, discuss the Ashraf matter later. Alright, it's good to have you as my Vice President, Lucien. And I'm glad to have you as my President, sir. I entered my office and asked Sylvia for a second cup of coffee to wake me up. Another long day was waiting for me. What do you reckon, lads? Do you think I made the right move? Vice President, Chief Strategist, that's right. Might be becoming a little too over-reliant on one fellow. What's happened to the economists? Weird. Lucian Galata rises to the task. Hmm. Right, eh? Briefing on the woman's rights situation. I was sitting in my office. I looked at the clock. 2.26 p.m. It was almost time for my appointment with Chiara on women's rights. There was a knock at the door. Chiara entered the room with folders in her hand. The door did not close behind her. Monica entered the room and stood next to Chiara. Mr. President. Ah, oh, right, and they're going to tag team me, right? Tup. Okay, well, just like always, I'm going to try and play, play the middle course between these two. Now that we've got an economy that's going, we might be able to loosen things up a little in terms of women's rights, but we can't go giving them everything that they want. You know, otherwise it could have very negative repercussions. Before we start, I just wanted to thank you for agreeing to this meeting. I've been dreaming about this ever since I volunteered with the Swordish League of Women. I can't believe the moment's finally here. Alright. I hope you thought this through. Real change requires carefully considered plans. We did. Chara sat down on a chair and laid down the folder she was holding. We still have a long way to go before Swordish women are able to enjoy the same rights and privileges as men or even as their counterparts in Arcasia and United Contana, we have been lagging, lagging behind on this for decades, Anton. And this isn't only a moral issue. I've seen enough revolutions in this world to understand the main driver of any change. Uh, and what do you think that is? Money. Yeah, all right, okay. In United Contana, law dictates that women earn the same wages as men in their respective fields. My research shows that this has led to a 15.5% increase in productivity. You could say this has had a direct influence on their superpower status. Arcasia passed laws ensuring maternity leave rights, child daycares, centres and tax deductions for working families. In turn, they experienced a 12.6% productivity boost and a flourishing economy. Yeah. 
well, it's certainly showing that in the best possible light. I wonder if there are real world repercussions of um, wage alignment and um, maternity leave that does actually show a boost in productivity or not. And I am unsure. Both countries have also had significantly lower infant mortality rates. Well, that's a good thing. A statistic I believe is directly linked to the improved status of women. Hmm. Our administration has thus far failed to pull Swordland out of its economic recession. What are you talking about? We've got five bars. We used to have one bar. So I am asking, why not try passing similar laws? At worst, even if they fail to improve the economy, it'll still be a significant step forward for our society. Now, due to the um, massive decrease in unemployment that we've had, I feel okay about opening up some roles for women in the economy for them to move into. So I'm asking, why not? Ah, uh, yeah, right. It's only logical. The two of us talked it over, and these are the measures we believe that are most urgently needed. Criminalising domestic violence. Yep, fair enough. Support for working mothers. Uh, yeah, it depends on what that support, what form that support takes. Uh, equal treatment in the workforce. Yeah, fair enough. Gender equality in public education. Mm, we're probably going to have to stay with specialised roles for a while yet. Um... Oh, I'm supposed to pick these, am I? All right. I shouldn't have to tell you how crucial this is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I agree, it's a travesty. As incidents are especially high within bluedish communities, I would also advocate for setting up a special domestic violence task force in collaboration with bluedish women's rights organisations. Are you sure that's something we ought to focus on? The bluds are different. They have their own rules. Monica, I'm surprised at you. We can't let women suffer under the patriarchy, no matter their ethnicity. Uh, here it comes. All right. Um, the Bloods must conform to Swordish law. Now we can discuss the particulars once the law is passed. All right, support for working mothers. It simply isn't fair that women in the workforce are punished for having children. Well, that's not how I would characterise it. Remember what I told you about Janice, my friend who basically got fired for becoming pregnant? That would never happen to a man, you know, because men don't get pregnant. I mean, it's a pretty major factor. Paid maternity leave and state subsidised daycare centres could be key to keeping, mo keeping more mothers employed. Yeah, but think about it in terms of productivity. All you're actually doing is just moving who's in what role, right? Every woman who... Um, moves in from a mother role to a worker role is simply moving another woman out of whatever she was doing into the um, daycare role so you know, it doesn't actually help anybody out unless of course you're doing it through daycare centers in which case you can have far more co kids looked after by fewer women and then the work from those women who are no longer doing that work can be put into the economy so that does make sense and paid maternity leave I wonder what the birth rates are like for our country. Alright, I don't want to reward women for choosing work over raising their children. I mean, raising children is more important, that's true. Uh, having children never hindered my career prospects. It shouldn't hinder a woman either. Well, that's quite a blind way of looking at things. I'll have to think about this. Monica, you, never, you said you never regretted giving up a career to raise Frank and Diana. <laughs> mm, I wonder what she'll say about that. I never had a choice. Moving on, equal treatment in the workforce, that's an easy one. Swordland is one of the continent's largest pay gaps between men and women. We need legislation ensuring that a woman doing the same job as a man is paid the same wage. We would also introduce quotas to get more women into positions of power, in the assembly for instance, or on the board of corporations. Eventually narrowing the pay gap is a far more pressing issue, as it would bring financial independence to countless lower income women. Yeah, I don't care about the boards of corporations thing. Like that's a that can be sorted out on an individual level. Um, I always thought that with more women in power, higher status for all women naturally follow. Yeah. Women are starving because they don't make a living wage. That's a damn sight more important than your friend Janice being passed over for a promotion. Oof, cold. Uh, I don't see a problem with quotas, but tackling the pay gap is much more urgent. 
quotas seem far easier to implement than equal pay laws. We should start there. Quotas are a terrible idea. People should be hired on merit, not simply because of their sex. That's correct. All right. Oops, something's going ding, 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 lads. Let me just quote that. All right. Um... Men are hired on the basis of their sex all the time, just not consciously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are more enough qualified women to fill any position you can think of. It's up to us to give them the opportunity. Well, the opportunities are there. They should just apply for the roles and get them. All right, gender equality in public education. You know how much this means to me, and you've witnessed the dangers firsthand. The way girls are shut out of a real education unless their parents have the means to get them out of the school public, public school system. So many bright minds are being lost. I wouldn't, I wouldn't entirely demean the old system, Chiara. Diana still loves her handicraft classes. Right, so what I want to be able to do is uh, keep the specialisation, right, the, the role specialisation, whilst also selecting high-achieving girls for public roles. And I'm not saying we'll take those away. Maybe boys should learn handicrafts too. Monica burst out laughing. Imagine Frank in an apron. <laughs> Uh, Alright, we've had this conversation, Chiara. I'm entirely on your side. We can't force schools what to teach to whom. That's right. We can, if not doing so, puts us on the wrong side of history. See, we're like, with that two option, those two options, I read there's really like a more a more subtle option that more accurately represents my views. But anyway, I still believe you made a mistake with your creationism decision. Let's move on for now. That covers all the subjects. What are your thoughts so far? You've made a good case for all these changes. I'm not sure I can risk passing laws like these so close to the election. It feels too much like you're comparing Swordland to other nations. We must choose our own path. Well, none of those are really options that I want to choose. You've made a good case for all the changes? No, because some of them I want to accept and some of them I want to deny. I'm not sure I can risk passing laws like these so close to the election. I mean, that's a lie, but it is a good out. It feels too much like you're comparing Swordland to other nations. We must choose our own path. <sighs> well, obviously we must choose our own path, but that's always the case. And I don't actually care about the comparison. So that's half a lie and half a dodge. Mm. Alright, I'm going to go with number three. I agree completely. We must aim to be better than them, better than all the superpowers. Yeah, right, I can, yeah, fair enough. I can get along with that. None of them have yet managed to achieve true parity among the sexes. If we can do that, we'll make history. Let's talk about how to proceed. I want to establish a commission for women's rights in Swordland with me as its head. Our goal shall be port passing and implementing a set of laws to solve the problems we just discussed. As the Commission spokeswoman, my responsibility will be to make speeches and organise fundraisers. I'll be the face of this movement while Chiara handles the groundwork. I can show that the First Lady is behind this movement. Many women will feel encouraged. Especially those that aren't keen on pantsuits. The organisation's name will be a Commission on the Status of Women. Hmm. What do you need a Commission for? I'll run your laws past the Assembly. It's going to be damn hard getting your laws past the assembly. I know, but even a watered-down version would be better than nothing. One more thing to consider before making your decision. This would help silence any of the public's lingering questions regarding your former vice president and Olivia Suno affair. That's a good argument on the domestic front. You have a chance to be a hero. Think about Diana and her future. I hope you will make the right decision. Hmm. Ah, oh, really? Only two options? Ay, ay, ay. They really put you on the spot in this game, eh, lads? I will approve the creation of the Commission and support your bill in the Assembly. Sorry, but the answer is no. You can try and run your laws by the Assembly, but they'll get no support from me. Well, the position of woman in Swordland does need to be improved. Um especially the domestic violence if it's not actually illegal. I mean, that's a travesty, as the game has said. So I will support it, but I will try and water it down as much as possible because I want to try and have, uh, like I say, if we just instantly make it, uh, change all of the laws at once, then that's just going to create a massive drop in wages and mass unemployment, immediately driving us back into the recession that we're only just crawling our way out of. 
Alright, I'm gonna do it. <sighs> we still have a long way to go. I'll start gathering names for the commission tonight. Alright, and then they got out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, I hope they give me the option to actually select the policies that I support and the ones that I don't. That would be ideal. Alright. Um, so, there's one here. It looks like that's it. And the Swedish League of Women has requested a private donation from the President. Sweet. I've been looking for something to spend money on. Okay, news. Rain makes a donation to the Swedish League of Women, and will the policies follow? Well, some of them. Mediation and the dispute of the gendarmerie. I arrived at the city of Vesord with my new vice president, Lucian, after arriving, after receiving an emergency meeting request from Josef and Lilius. I had seen the reports of a recent issue that rose between the Swedish police forces and the gendarmerie units at the city. The report said that an operation against a drug trafficking gang in Vesord failed due to miscommunication. It was not hard to guess what this meeting was going to be about. We entered the city hall and made our way to the second floor. I could hear Josef and Lilias' voices echoing down through the hall. I opened the doors to the meeting room and the two ministers did not even realise. This is unacceptable. How dare the med police meddle in the affairs of the gendarmerie? It was your men who started this ridiculousness and meddled with an ongoing police investigation. The voices were getting louder. Rural security is my jurisdiction and your men were way outside of the sword. Mr. Lankaya, Mr. Graf, please remain calm. What's the problem? Apologies, Ms. Graf here fails to understand her place. No, Mr. Lankaya, you are the one who does not understand his place. If you continue to do so, you will pay for it one day. Slam the table. I slammed the table, which shocked the ministers. They fell silent. you got to give them stick occasionally. Right out. Yosef, let's hear your side of the story. Yosef, you were supposed to be my right hand man. The Lieutenant General of the Gendarmerie was tracking a drug trafficking ring in the country side of the sword. We immediately acted on it. Just when we were about to raid their hideout with live weapons, the police units arrived on the scene and alerted the criminals. As a result, they got away. Isn't there a line of communication between you? There is, but the Minister of Defence decided to avoid notifying the police department about the planned raid. The same could be said about you because the reports show that you knew about the gang and their stash in the countryside. Hmm. How do we solve this issue so it never happens again? I think this was the last drop. Internal security matters should be handed to the Ministry of the Interior completely. We are called the Ministry of the Interior for a reason. We can't let any more screw-ups like this happen again. She looked at me. I want the gendarmerie to be transferred to the Ministry of the Interior. What? Woman, are you out of your mind? Yosef turned red with anger. He composed himself after a moment. Looking at it from the perspective of improving our internal security, I agree with Ms. Graf. We would reap the benefits in the long run. Look, Mr. Galata, I know you are new at this and there is much that you were not briefed about. Mr. Lankaya, you are forgetting who I am. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I won't hand over the gendarmerie to her. Out of the question. Hmm. Do you have a better solution? Whenever operations overlap, we should engage at a lower rank with the local officers on both sides. We could work on establishing that, but it still doesn't change the wrong system that exists now. I want to remind you about your promise, Mr. President. Oh, did I promise her? Did I lead? Did I promise? To transfer it to her? I probably did. And it seems like our strategist agrees. Uh, yes, but my decision hasn't been made yet. I sure hope that you will keep your word. Now I see what's going on here. Uh, enlighten us. What's going on here, Yosef? Lilia set us up to create this incident. What proof do you have? There is no way that the police has arrived at the right time of a month-long search on the exact day and minute of the gendarmerie riot, raid. Hmm, you might be right. It's very disappointing you would even entertain the idea. This kind of accusation is unheard of. It's nonsense. If I were you, I wouldn't believe a word Mr. Lankaya says, Mr. President. Heed my word, Mr. President. With dealing with these situations, you need to always look at who gets what out of it. 
Mm, that's a fair point. Quay bono, right? I wouldn't stand idle by these utterly ridiculous and baseless accusations. I won't have time for this. What's your decision? Um, well, I can't afford to make political enemies, so I am going to transfer if that is what I promised. Even though I don't want to um, put, move Josef Lankaya to the outside. My hope is that all of the money that we've spent on the military will mean that... I, um, he will stay on side with us. Alright, you are making a mistake. Thank you for being a man of your word. That was the right call to establish a modern internal security structure. I want those criminals to be caught. That's not really the issue. From now on, work together and don't fight each other. I want capable and effective members of cabinet. Right. We will do our best, right, Mr. Linkaya? That's right, Ms. Graff. I left the room to attend the next meeting. Meetings, 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 eh? Gendarmerie transferred to the interior. What else have we got over here? Read the report from Nabal. Community police reduce the drug trade. Good. Excellent. What else? Back to the center city. Briefing on the current healthcare situation. Well, this should be interesting. I had a meeting scheduled with Pascal to receive the annual health care report. He arrived at my office with stacks of papers underneath both arms. Mr. President, he put the mountain of papers on my desk and it made a loud thud sound. I know this seems like a lot. Reviewing it shouldn't take more than a day. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. He measured the pile again. Or maybe two. Yeah, maybe. They contain very important information about the status of our health care. Salaries, spendings, hospital reports, whatever you like. This is what I hire you for, but we can go through this together. Can't you just summarise them? Yeah, give me the decision maker's brief. Of course. So, we've concluded our report for the year. Our services haven't necessarily gotten better compared to the last years. We have missed several funding opportunities to expand our services in the country, leading to several issues being unsolved. Hmm. Anybody can succeed when given all the resources. We need to do better. Yes, I agree. The recession absolutely pushed welfare to the brink and no further funds mean we couldn't do much. But as you can see, it hasn't been the best year for us at all. Well then, get to the bottom of it. I will do whatever I can. Now that I have given you the short summary, there is a very important matter to discuss. Leaning over to grab his briefcase, he pulled out a tan-coloured package. The package was stamped with big red letters that read, Confidential. Pascal opened the package and brought out a few documents. He handed them over to me. What do we got? For the President's eyes only, polio outbreak in Bergia. How bad is it? For now it seems to be under control. We've put a few villages under quarantine. The total number of infected... <coughs> <coughs> Bless me, bless me, bless my soul. For now it seems to be under control. We have put a few villages under quarantine. The total number of infected are currently 1,467. Death toll is at 23 so far. If we have more outbreaks, the results will be terrible. Alright, so I'm going to spend on this. We are not where we could have been in terms of our healthcare funding. With what we currently have, I'm afraid, it might not be enough to curb the infection ratio. This is a very serious matter, Mr. President. Lives of Swordish citizens are at stake. That's right, I'll do whatever it takes to eliminate the threat. We've done our research and there is a cure. A vaccination was recently invented in United Quintana by a doctor and the formula has been made available for free in the entire world. Fantastic. This is all very relevant, isn't it, lads? No matter what people think about United Quintana, if the same thing happens in Arcasia, we would be paying the price for it. Unfortunately, because of the state of our current funding, we do not have the required materials and we don't have the capability to produce the vaccine locally. No, which means we have to buy it. It will be costly, but nothing comes before health. Procure for whatever you need. Minus one government budget. You're exaggerating. Only 30 deaths and you said the infected were under quarantine. I'm not going to approve this procurement. All right, spend it now. Stamp it down before it becomes an issue. You have once again proven that you are the right leader for Swordland in my eyes. Right away, Mr. President, this is a great first step. Yeah, I'm, I'm still concerned about the budget. Hopefully the economy will continue to expand and then we can start saving a bit of money. 
Um, but I'm afraid simply having the vaccines won't help. We need to make sure they are administered. We need to implement a nationwide mandatory polio vaccination policy. With your order, I can immediately get to work to ensure we are doing whatever it takes. This might seem excessive, however, it is absolutely necessary. Yep, do it. Uh, great. So, he says salute and goes. Good. Budget is at minus four. Rural Education Institute's open. Cool. So we are getting a bit of development. What's happening here? Yeah, yeah, same thing. Okay, cool. Hello. What's this one? Free medicine and stored. Good. What do you reckon? Handing out the goodies. Surely people are going to vote for me now, right lads? Read the report from Holesword. Fair Trade Commission established. Uh, the Fair Trade Commission has opened in Holsword today and began coordinating with the Central Bank, National Business Council and the Ministry of the Economy to get an analysis of the competition issues and potential regulation legislation. The effort to bring fairness to trade and commerce in Swordland is led by a visionary small business owner who sued Heart of Swordland in an unfair competition bid and won in court. Okay. Less smoke bill. The Assembly passes an amendment to the tax bill of 1944 in order to increase tax revenue and reduce the excessive amount of tobacco consumption in the general populace. Yes, I'm going to sign that because I like making money and it's good for the people. Salus Populi Suprema Lex. Support Ashraf Anniversary. Uh, mm. with Armoured Convoy, and that's the one for us. Cool. Okay. Time to smoke this, and smoke's text, that's right. And now, alright, so, that taxation brought the budget back again a little, that's good. Solidarity for this guy, eh? I think we're going to do this one quick mode, lads. Better safe than sorry. Um, yeah, whatever. Blah, 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 blah. Welcome to Urzerin, Mr. President. Shake his hand. I'm not sure how bringing your personal army will help. Uh, they're not my personal army, they protect the government. The government must have a reason to fear from its own citizens then. On a day like this, when you want to show support for the murdered bloodish people, you bring men with guns. Yeah, it's called peace for, through superior firepower. I don't know what your intention is, but I only ask of you to at least be respectful of the procedures, Mr. President. Uh, my only intention is to stand in solidarity with our bloodish people. Shall we move into the sanctuary then? Yeah, let's do that. Great. Alright. Hope you guys don't mind me doing the fast one through this. Alright. My fellow citizens. Better morning. Uh, here's one of you. Now, which one of these is the unification one? I assure you this administration will do its absolute best to mend the wounds. I share your hatred and anger. No, despite the attempts to divide us, our people will stand as one. We are sword, we are blued, we are united under one flag. There we go, that's the unification one. Alright, don't play into the hands of the separationists. United we stand, divided we fall. Correct. Um... Love thy brothers and thy sisters. We must always stay together in the face of adversity against all odds. That's correct. Um, let this be a testament of our unity for future generations. Let us stand together as blued and sword. Uh, I need help from each and every one of you to make this country a better place. That's right. To our unity. You cannot claim that you support us after trying to kill our language. Blah, blah, blah. Righto. 
Oh, they shot a dude. Tap. Oh dear. Alright. Get an ambulance. Well, that did not unify things in the slightest, lads. What's going on here? Coward. Urza and kicks out the president. Uh, well, briefing on the current political situation. I walked to the white room with a cup of coffee in my hand. I had a meeting with the vice president on the current political situation. Good morning, sir. Let's begin. I want to provide you with some quick updates on the current political situation. He pulled out a few documents from the briefcase and laid them on the table. Mr. Hollis reported to me that he almost concluded the plan for the next steps we can take for improving the economy. He said he wanted to solidify the plan before it is presented to you. We will schedule a meeting soon to go over our options. Um, I will be expecting good ideas and even better outcomes. Of course, I will relay this to him as soon as possible. He closed the folder and put away the documents. That's all for the quick updates. This is it for now. As I mentioned, this is just a quick update. Uh, if anything changes, immediately inform me. Of course, Mr. President. All right. Ooh, we've got a whole lot of things going on here. And what's in the news? Governor Bron kidnapped. Not good. Mandatory vaccine policy. BFF captures Sol Dam. Officials have admitted that currently Sol Dam is under the control of BFF after nighttime raid by terrorists. Uh, we are going to have to stomp on them, lads. Right over well, gendarmerie outpost bombing. The president's decisive action stops polio in its tracks. Oh, look at that. Even the radicals have to admit I did something right there. Okay, read the report from Sol Dam captured by BFF. The latest reports from the workers at Sol Dam indicate that the energy facilities have been taken over in what is thought to be a terror attack. The escaped workers were unharmed, well that's a mercy, and the witnesses reported that the attackers were most likely from BFF. According to their account, a group of at least 30 to 40 attackers quickly dismantled their security. Police have been deployed to the area. So far, no demands were made yet. Alright. And the report from Urzazan, polio disease is controlled. Good. Read the report from Rival, bombing of gendarmerie outpost in Rebel. Terrorists from BFF bombed a gendarmerie outpost in Rebel. Alright, well, so that's two terrorist attacks. So yeah, we're really going to have to bring the hammer down on these guys. You might think, um, what if we just play it soft, but the, you, generally speaking, uh, terrorist groups will do whatever they can get away with, so you have to hammer them, and then um, once you have absolutely hammered them so badly that they're in a position of absolute weakness, then you can negotiate surrenders and that kind of thing from them. Um, the old saying is you don't negotiate with terrorists. That's not quite accurate. You do negotiate from terrorists. You just negotiate with your boot on their neck. Okay, Governor of Bergia, Felix Braun, kidnapped by the BFF. Alright, that's three terrorist attacks all up. And long lines wait for polio vaccine and diet. Man. Well, now we'll get through them all though. Okay, briefing on the increasing unrest among the populace. Lilius entered my office and took a seat. Is this the chick that I gave the gendarmerie to? Mr. President, we have a problem. Go on. This data just came in. Take a look. Alright, this is the report on the terrorist attacks, I'm assuming. Yep. Yes, you read that right. The British Freedom Front has taken over Sol Dam. That dam currently provides 90% of electricity to Bergia and its neighbouring regions. If they destroy the power station, I don't even want to think about the outcome. Thankfully, no casualties have been reported yet. We know they have taken the staff as hostages. Um, this is ridiculous. How could we let this happen? The dam was not necessarily guarded well. No one thought they would hit a power centre. Mr. President, I'm afraid that's not all. With a simultaneous attack, the British terrorists have raided the governor's office in Dyer and kidnapped Governor Braun. They are holding him hostage as well. Carl Greiser is on his way here right now. He will tell us what he knows so far. Alright. Status report. Mr. President, I'm sorry for being late. Carl, I already informed the President of the situation. Do you have any updates? We have just received the demands from the terrorists. What are they? Uh, the 
free people of Baludia have suffered enough under the tyranny of Swordland, well, feel free to fuck off back to your homeland then. Our villages were destroyed, our men and women assaulted, our children killed by our very own government in the name of this dam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We the BFF are not like the Swordish government. We know compassion and we believe in a chance for reconciliation between our people. Um, we are ready to sit at the table as equals here. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Make no mistake, we also know that true freedom comes at a cost. We will not hesitate to sacrifice as many lives as it takes to achieve our goals. And yet, well, you can either become citizens or you can leave. Those are the options. If our demands are not met, we will cut off electricity to the entirety of Burgia and Nuagas regions, along with the mayor's head. Take this as your final warning. Yolak Bluderat. I handed the document to Lilius and she read it carefully. As I thought, Mr. President, the BFF is a threat against our nation. They must be completely eradicated. I agree. Uh, we will not negotiate with the terrorists. Your orders, Mr. President? Eliminate the enemies of the state. As you command. Good to see that we are taking immediate action. Thank you, Mr. President. That's all I had for today. Um, do not let anything like this happen again. If you do, heads will roll. Understood. Come on, Carl. We're leaving. All right. So hopefully um, the special operations squads will go in and eliminate the coordinators of these kind of terrorist attacks. And once we eliminate the command layer, then that means that they'll only be down to lone wolves, and the lone wolves will drive hatred in the native population against the uh, Bluetooth population, so the, pop the government won't experience any backlash from the majority population, um, meaning that there won't be any kind of like major um, uh, domestic policy, uh, domestic voting outcomes for us. In fact, if we could go heavily against them, we might even have like a, a certain amount of strength of, uh, growth of strength of feeling for the traditionalist wing of our party, which I'm hoping to bring back on board. Uh, some of you are likely thinking that they've taken too hard a line with them, that there's some sort of negotiation that is going on. But I assure you, if you treat these terrorists with a soft hand, all you're going to do is encourage them and make the problem far worse. This is the solution-oriented path. All right, what else have we got? Security Act. Sign or veto the Security Act that was approved by the Grand National Assembly. The lack of security due to the period of social upheaval calls for drastic measures proposed by the majority of the GNA. Section 1 of the SA allows for the use of force wherever deemed necessary. Section 2 orders that suspicion-based arrests and confiscations can occur without warrants. Section 3 allows security forces to use their authority beyond the legal limits that are permissible if it ensures maintaining state security and by extension the general public. So I, um, this is an anti-liberal law. Every one of these is... Uh, um, uh, destruction of citizens' rights. So at the moral level, I don't want to do this. However, the situation that we're in is one in which uh, going through with it is more important than not going through with it because, on balance, the destruction of the liberal rights of the citizens um, is a less large imposition than... Uh, the imposition that would be caused by uh, caused to those people's lives if we didn't go through with this and it led to internal stability with the communists infiltrating a whole bunch of the cities and starting to move into political uh, political action and also uh, the bluish uprisings uh, uprisings uh, and also um, the infiltration by uh, that country to the north, right? So those are three factors of things that could lead to bad outcomes for individuals. And overall, that outweighs these, even though I would much rather be able to counter those um, three threats without having to um, destroy the civil rights of the citizens. Unfortunately, that's not a possibility for us, so I will sign it. I don't like it, though. President of order. That is correct. Correct. What do the Germans say? Ordnung muss sein. Okay. Let's continue. Chapter four. Checkmate. That's right. All of my political enemies are out on the out, and I'm ready to move. This is where part of the game where the rooks start moving, lads.
What have we got? Look at the economy's gone down to two. That is terrible. I wonder what caused that. Geopolitico. Hegel would take all the necessary steps. In a televised address, Chancellor Emmerich Hegel claimed intensive fighting was taking place between the Agnolian forces and the locals of Helgeland, resulting in the massacres of ethnic Valgs living on the island. He portrayed the conflict as a national struggle and compared it to the independence wars of the former colonies in Rico. So this kind of escalation indicates that he's probably going to move to a war footing and uh, just take the island, I would guess. Hegel said Valgsland, as the guarantor of Helgeland's security, would take all the necessary steps to prevent mass atrocities committed against the islanders. Van Houten said in a television interview from that Valgslandians must withdraw their harassment squad from the Marcan Sea before any diplomatic talks can happen. Yeah, well, shutting the door on diplomacy is not going to help, but maybe it's past the point of diplomacy already anyway. Okay... Another day at home. Order pizza. Yeah, love pizza. Okay. Oh, I thought Mum would pick up. She's off on her ladies' crusade as usual. Oh, right. Diana's going to have a fit if she gets rid of girls' handicraft classes. There was a long silence. I got that record you sent me. Not bad for old folks' music. <laughs> Peter thought you might like it. How's Uncle Peter doing? Ah... Uh, do you even know what he did? I get it, you don't want to talk about it. So I've been seeing this new girl at school. <laughs> nice. Is she a looker? She's beautiful. Actually, Dad, she's bluedish. Um I'm surprised she'd be interested in the president's son then. She knows kids aren't just extensions of their parents. A lesson you should try learning sometime. Oh uh, here we go, he's been radical radicalized because he got a little bit of gash. She told me a bit about us what her family's going through back in Burgia. Dad, you have to stop this. Yeah, she's got your hen pecked already, I see. You really don't get it, do you? Maybe I'll bring her over for dinner next week. Maybe once you meet her, you'll understand the harm you're doing. Uh, uh, good catching up with you, Frank. Oh, yeah, okay, bye. <laughs> uh, what a brat. I, just, I let Serge in the pizza he brought was gargantuan. You want to join me for dinner? I think there's a football game on. Sorry, sir, got to get back to the family. All right. Oh well, I don't mind watching a bit of footy with the pizza by myself, mate. You know, you know, whiskey to keep you warm at the time. How? That's a good way to unwind. All right, what do we got? You know, as long as you don't overdo it, or else you end up going down Peter's path. Election campaign ramps up across Swordland. That's right. Former VP steps back from public life. Exactly. Not even Valgslandian fire can stop us. The industrial city of Conria is officially completed. Nice. The city is expected to soon rival Lochhaven due to a newly diversified and expanded manufacturing industry. The mayor of Conria, Chris Shah, has expressed his utmost gratitude for the investment the president has put into the city. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> that's fine. It's fine. Please. Really, that's quite unnecessary. In his statement, the president had made an excellent choice in investing in the city that had stood the test of time. The people of Conrad are hard-working and resilient. Not even Valgslandian fire can stop us from being great. With the new factories, Conrad will single-handedly bring Swordland out of the recession. You absolute champions, the mayor has decided to host a horse race with only locally bred sword horses to celebrate the grand opening ceremony. Fantastic. I'd like to see a bit of a bit of spirit. Harsher than soul security passage. Uh, package. In an unprecedented move, the Assembly has passed the Security Act into law with the signature of President Rain. This marks the harshest security laws this country has seen since surpassing those of even souls. Yes, these are unusual times and the country is discontent, but isn't this going too far? Yeah, fair enough. That is a good question. The package was supported by the National Front and condemned by the PFJP Deputy Manoli Sahail. With the passing of the draconian measures, nobody in this country is safe from police brutality anymore. The Rain administration marks an era of increased uncertainty and instability. There are massive demands for de-escalation, not escalation. Interesting. And the Economist Security Act threatens the economy. No, that's not good. After the passage of the Security Act, the economic future of the country is less certain than ever. Foreign investors are shying away from Swordland and investing in countries like Agnolia or Kairut. Understandably, the security measures were necessary, but such an increase of authority will hurt the country's economy. That's weird. I would have thought that an increase in order would have made them more willing. I regard that as, frankly, unhistorical, lads. 
Conrad Industrial Zone was open to the public. Long lines of factory workers are waiting in line to apply for new opportunities. The opening is expected to increase industrial output of Conrad by 40%. Hell yes. As per the reports, industrial workers from nearby cities are also migrating, creating an influx of jobs and investments. Fantastic. Alright, and let's go through all of these reports, eh? Police overwhelmed in remote cities. Since the deployment of the police forces to combat the unrest, many attacks have occurred in remote cities. Ambushes are rampant and the security forces are being pushed back. Police stations and patrols were the main targets of the militants. Unless reinforcements are provided, the current forces are not enough to control the situation. So even with all of the boosting of the um, internal militias and security forces, is still you know, a certain amount of you know, being overwhelmed. Read the report from Azazim, Police Ready for Operation. Oh, can I read that one again? Oops, too fast. And read the report from Arrival, Relocation Benefits. Cool. Read the report from Cayman, Fair Trade Commission creates trade regulation. Okay, so four points of economic development. Human Dignity Bill. The newly proposed bill will amend Section 3 of the 1923 Legal Transactions Act that allow the legalisation of transactions which occur in non-registered businesses or other entities like single persons if the parties delivered accurate documentation to the financial authority. This created a legal loophole for prostitution. The Human Dignity Bill will protect common decency and prevent the violation of moral principles that occur in the act of prostitution by making it an illegal offence in which the perpetrators will be punishable by law. Alright, let's sign it. I'm definitely not keen to veto things unless it's absolutely necessary. So if the Assembly thinks it's a good idea, that's fine. Cool, strong moral backbone. That's what I like to hear. Discussion on current internal affairs. Alright, uh, we'll do the long form version of this one. That's a storm was on the horizon outside my window. The mood in my office was equally dark and a storm of a different kind was brewing inside. I straightened myself on the sofa and looked at Carl who was sitting on the couch across from me, ready to give me the report from the Sol Dam. Sir, the operation has been successful. Nice. The governor has been taken out of the dam unharmed and the armed rebels at the scene were eliminated. The community police personnel at the scene has helped immensely with the operation by convincing the rebels to release the governor. We commenced the operation as soon as we had him. We suffered no casualties as a result. Fantastic. Also, one of the rebels who died at the operation is identified to be the current leader. Excellent. We'll soon eradicate their group completely, Mr. President. Have no worries. Alright, so now you might be thinking these extrajudicial killings are not really in line with true humanitarian values, and that's exactly right. But overall, it's still probably the right move. At this very moment, our special teams are raiding numerous suspected BFF hideouts to find smaller groups before they can reorganise. Cool. Great work, Cal. Good. I want more gone for good. Of course, sir, you can count on us. Um, get to work immediately and finish the job. I want all of them gone. So once we completely crush the network, because uh, there's two major formats of terrorist organisation. One of them is a network-based one, and so those are the ones where once you eliminate all of the command levels, the lower ones can really only attribute, can only perform lone wolf attacks. And then there's the uh, distributed cells one, who just kind of rely on propaganda to understand what they're supposed to do and rely on their own unity groups um, and don't actually communicate, and they're harder to eliminate, but they are much less effective. So, you know, if, if we, we can, can move them from one strategy to the next, that's an advantage. And if we can get rid of the cells, then that's also good. But, you know, I would settle for just like a low level of um, terrorism rather than a uh, much more organised version. Alright, good. What's going on here? Successful dam operation. Good. And what does Geopolitico have to say? Valsland blockades Helgeland. Yep. No surprises there. What's going on here? Rumberg plane warned inside airspace. A lone Rumbergian warm plane violated our airspace by entering the territory of Swordland for two minutes and left after issuing a radio message. I wonder what the radio message was. 
should have shot down that. If they buy that out here, space, they get shot down. Those are the rules. Okay. Fair Luxury Tax Act. The Assembly proposes an amendment to Section 6 of the Tax Code of 1949. The FLTA seeks to improve the fairness of the taxation system and increase tax revenues. Section 1 sets a 15% tax rate which will be imposed on items of luxury goods class luxury goods class determined by the Ministry of the Economy. This encompasses jewellery, furs, sports cars, yachts and private planes. Section 2 of the amendment will establish a 10% estate tax for the conditions of purchase, sale and transfer of property, in particular in inheritance situations. And that will give us plus 2 government budget, which will bring us close to budget parity. But 10% estate tax. How much damage will that do to the actual economy? Having a ten percent estate tax, probably not that much. And a fifteen percent tax rate on luxury items like jewellery, furs, sports car, yachts, and private planes. Hmm. I don't, do I want to spend my political capital to stop this going through? And veto it. I don't. I don't really think this is a good idea, but I also don't want to spend capital, so I'm just going to sign it through. Okay, government budget increased. Look at that. Bonk. Lost on economic development. Bugger. All right. Alcohol tax cent. Um, twenty percent tax on the sale of all alcohol products. Section 3 establishes 25 import tax on foreign alcohol products. Yep, that's again the same thing. Probably not a good idea, but I'm going to sign it through. So that brings our budget to zero. And we have three points of economic development. So now I'm perfectly willing to go back into debt again in order to try and get the economy back up. Mm. All right. Lid on alcohol consumption and luxury is now taxable. Better than an income tax anyway. I probably would have vetoed that if that's what they proposed. Emergency call on the escalating situation. I was woken up in the middle of the night by a call from the Ministry of Defence. Due to the sensitivity of the information, I had to be urgently briefed in person. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Into the war room. Oh uh, yeah, here we go. The dimly lit room was filled with cutting edge equipment, the latest video screens, long range radio electronics and other devices used for communication presentation and planning. The centrepiece of the room was a large round table with a coat of arms of sword and engraved on it. David, Lucien, Vulcan and Yosef were already deep in discussion. Lucien Gallardo says, Mr. Lankaya, I advise caution going to war wouldn't help anyone. We must maintain peace in Swordland and Eastern Merkaba at all costs. False. We must maintain peace at most costs. What do you expect us to do? Is sit down and do nothing? They're testing us. We must respond immediately, otherwise they'll think we're weak. Status report now. Mr. President, thank you for coming in at this late hour. Here's the situation. Falcon, provide the report. Mr. President, 20 minutes ago, Rumpu downed one of our planes with anti-aircraft fire from the ground. The pilot was declared KIA. The last recorded position of the plane was inside Swordish airspace. General Kruger, I mean no offence, but are we absolutely sure that this is the case? Are you sure this happened within our borders? No offence taken. Here are the locations on the map and the report from the airbase. To answer your question, we're absolutely sure. You can see here on the map that the plane was down approximately 10 kilometres inside our borders. We have calculated the trajectory of the gunfire and they started firing when our plane was within our border. Our plane was downed near Haugen. Okay, how dare they? This is an attack against our sovereignty. Mr. President, I must insist we need to be calm. We must maintain peace. I agree, says Lucien Gallardo. They are trying to lure us into their trap. We have enough military power now to contest it against this violation of international law. We should attack and down one of their planes in retaliation. Otherwise we will look weak and it will lead to more casualties. We can't look weak. If we appear weak, they will jump on the opportunity. We must order a military retaliation immediately. 
I agree with the general. Mr. President, our army is ready to do whatever it takes to protect Swordland. All right, so the basic principles of international relations are weakness causes wars, not strength. Um, and the way, and so that, you know, like I said before, peace through superior firepower, right? Gentlemen, before it comes to that point, we can prevent further bloodshed by using diplomacy. Mm, disagree. Mr. President, what are your orders? Start the Swordish war machine and prepare to invade Rumburg. They will pay for their crimes. Okay, no. Eye for an eye, we'll retaliate with equal force to display our strength. Swordland can't afford to look weak. Uh, we'll approach this diplomatically and try to de-escalate the situation by any means. No one wants war. We're going to take the middle course. Um, so that is a small step on the escalation ladder rather than just going straight to invasion or capitulation. If there is to be a retaliation, we need to be extremely careful. They will seek every opportunity to blame us for it. We can't further escalate the situation and destabilize the region. Well, this is brinksmanship. So we're just going to take turns playing who can stand closest to the edge until one of us falls off and then the war starts. We need to prevent a war at all costs. As I am saying this as a man who has lived through too many years of war. We're not yet. This is not an emotional decision. We are not the ones who escalated the situation, so they were first. Mr. President, I assure you, they wouldn't dare attack us for that. They know we are far superior. This will send a strong message. I will send word for the start of a military operation. Our target will be the warplanes at an airbase near their border. I still think that a peaceful solution would be more beneficial, but of course I don't have the military experience and insight Mr. Lankaya has. I will begin my task immediately, Mr. President. If you'll excuse me now, I must talk to the military command to relay the orders. Uh, I will bring the paperwork sign off on the operation. There we go. Now that the paperwork is done, I have an idea, Mr. President. I think we should hold a military parade to display our strength. I am with Mr. Lankaya on this one. We should, that would work well as a deterrent, and it will come in handy as a tool to de-escalate the situation. That is a good idea. Simple and effective without causing any ruckus. Uh, that makes sense. Organize the military parade. That's good. I'll keep you updated on the situation. For now, have a good night's sleep. You'll need it. I couldn't sleep at all that night. Yeah, I wonder where the operation's taking place. But assuming that we smash a few of their planes in retaliation, um, I think they'll know that uh, not to mess with us. All right, what else have we got? Swordish plane shot down, that's right. Urgent meeting on potential alliances. Oh, I was meeting, sitting right across from David in the white room after he scheduled an urgent meeting. So this could be anything, right? The whole the ball is up in the air. We don't know what's coming. We're going to be coming across the uh, border. Uh, what's going to be coming across the desk in terms of what this is going to be? It could be anything. I'm ho I'm hopeful, but it could be bad. It could be ASO saying, uh, if you keep this bullshit up, you're out. Or it could be um, them saying, we understand and we want you to provoke them. I knew the matter must have been serious. He insists on waiting for Yosef and Lucian as well. Uh, Mr. President, we came as fast as we could. What's going on? David cleared his throat. Welcome, everyone. Due to the potential ramifications, I want everyone to be present for this meeting. We have received an envoy from Arcasia. They are requesting a state visit. Judging from the current climate, it is not hard to see what this is about. ADO is always trying to expand its influence, after all. They will most likely try to convince us to join. Awesome. I hope that's what's going to happen. In addition, as part of the state visit, Dwight Walker will, of course, meet you in person, Mr. President. Fantastic. Um, it's about time. I wanted to meet with him as well. That's good. There's a lot we could gain from this visit. As much as I share their ideals, we need to be wary. Good. It's about time. I wanted to meet with him as well. With all due respect, are you out of your mind? Let him continue. This is madness. We cannot even consider accepting this. I bet he will come asking for us for cooperation under the guise of enforcing their demands to join ATO. Yeah, we want to join ATO. This will antagonise half of the world against us and we're going to be at the forefront of the battle. Yeah, that's right. Well, I mean, the world is split in half, so you have to pick a side. What do you want to do? Get blimmin' spit roasted between two of them when the war starts? No thanks. If you're approaching this from the perspective of national defence, then don't. We are in better shape than we were ever before. I assure you, we don't need any outside help. Definitely not from Dwight Walker. Uh, we'll have to make do somehow. Lankaya, I thought you were a strategist. Terrible. Uh, let's see what he wants first, and then I'll decide to talk to him. I trust your judgement and our troops. I want to take the least amount of risks for Swordland. Uh, let's see what he wants first. 
That seems to be the most enthusiastic of the options. We need to be careful. Mr. Walker never gives anything for free. There will be some concessions for sure. Mr. Wisher, you're our most experienced foreign policy expert. What's your take on this? What do you think is the right action? He's just going to say what I already said. World tension is increasing rapidly, Mr. President, and I am worried about the future. One misstep and the whole world might be engulfed in chaos. I'm afraid it might not be possible to stay neutral in this case. Our geopolitical position is simply too important. Soon we will have to take a side. There you go, lads. If we don't pick a side, we might end up right in the middle of a potential conflict. Exactly. I am of the opinion that this is an opportunity that we can't miss. That's exactly right. It all boils down to your decision, but I say we should at least listen to what Dwight Walker has to say. Um, very well. Accept their offer. I will send our response immediately. There is a tiny detail we need to get over with. How should we welcome their delegation, sir? Um, plain welcome, military welcome, or extravagant welcome. A military welcome is in order. They need to see our might. As you wish. I think that's all for today. Thank you for attending. All right. What do you reckon? Can we just go straight to that one? State visit of President Walker? We can. Just do a quick round out, nothing else. Whew, things are hotting up. Merkipa, boy oh boy. The door of the car opened and flashes went off. Dwight Walker, president of Arcadia, Arcasia, <laughs> Arcadia, head of ATO, came out of the car, smiling and waving at the enormous crowd that had gathered. It was not every day an Arcasian president came to visit Swordland, after all. Next to the maroon carpet to the palace, Swordish troops were lined up. Swordish warplanes flew above our heads, painting the sky with the colours of the Swordish flag. As soon as President Walker stepped on the carpet, all of our soldiers performed a hard salute. Celebrity gunshots were fired. Not celebratory. Trumpets started playing a Swordish march. Along with Monica, I walked over to meet him in midway. Finally, I was in reaching distance to one of the most powerful men in the world. He looked at Monica first, bowed and kissed her hand for a second longer than I liked. Mr. Rain, if you told me I would get to meet with your lovely wife, I would have come sooner. I'm charmed, Mrs. Rain. Oh my, thank you, Mr. Walker. It is a pleasure to meet you. No, the pleasure is all mine, Mr. Rain. Oh, oh, Ms. Rain. Ms. Rain? Mrs. Rain, excuse me. I hope your wife and the family as well. They are very well, Ms. Rain, thank you. Unfortunately, they couldn't make it here today. And who do we have here? Mr. President, it's so good to finally meet you. We shook hands. It is really good to see you, Mr. President. And I assure you, the feeling is mutual. That's why I'm here, in fact. On the way to the entrance, we stopped in front of General Valken, who was in charge of the troops. General? President Walker saluted Valken and the soldiers, and they saluted back. As soon as our inspection finished, we entered the palace. Ah, the President must be a military man. Mr. President, one would think you were prepared to go to war with me instead. He laughed. Yeah, laugh at his joke. We started walking towards the reception hall in the palace. Our path was cleared of people at once. He was simply looking around at the extraordinary interior design of the Maroon Palace. Statues, paintings, various ornaments filled both sides of the corridor. We passed the corridor and entered the reception hall. The crowd inside was composed of various politicians and state figures. Upon our entry, they started clapping. Dry martinis were handed to both of us. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you President Walker. Thank you, President Rain. It really is good to be here. And thank you, everyone, for the warm welcome. What do you reckon, lads? You think I've kissed his ass enough to bring him on site? Surely, right? I wonder what he's going to want from us. Could be anything. With another thunderous round of applause, the jazz band started playing. President Walker and I separated and started mingling with the crowd. The reception was in full swing. Ms. Rain, can I call you Monica? She looked over at me before smiling at him. Yes, of course, if I can call you Dwight. She, he took her hand and they started dancing. I turned around to talk to the waiter. I was into my third martini when I heard a whistle. I turned around and saw Monica dancing very closely with President Walker. All eyes in the room were on them. President Walker grabbed Monica's waist. Um, finish my martini. I trust my wife. I watched from the sidelines and what finished my martini while faking claps and smiles. Swirling around, Monica looked like she was having fun. They finally finished their dance after a few minutes and came over to the bar that I was leaning on. Monica, you are full of surprises. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Mr. Rain, you are one lucky guy. Uh, I know, and I cherish every moment of it. She looked at me and smiled. Ah, you lovebirds. 
See, play it cool, lads. The president and I swapped our drinks for earlier maroon 30 year olds. Oof, I could go for one of those right now. I knew a special spot. With our drinks at hand, we went down the stairs to the basement. Gradually, the music and the sound of the party started to fade away. We arrived at a cosy little corner office with not much inside other than a table and comfortable chairs. He took a seat and I followed suit. He pulled out two cigars. Nice, I could go for a cigar too. He pulled out a Rippo and lit my cigar before lighting his own. I heard you got into a scandal. Uh, hmm, truly unfortunate chain of events. Indeed. Relax, it's just a scandal. I'm no reporter. I just made it alive out of a bad one myself. Oof, it was a rough one too. You get used to it. A couple of people in prison, a couple of people silenced, you know the drill. Cheers to your survival then, Mr. Rain. We clinked our glasses and took a sip. Ah, this is a really good one. Very smoky. I like it. Ah, I'm glad you like it. Took a puff of the cigar. Definitely miles better than Valkslandian whiskey. But I like wet lesbian whiskey more. It pairs better with their cigars. You see, Mr. Rain, whiskies are a little bit like countries. Some are stronger, some are weaker. Some are older, some are younger. Many are complex, but sometimes simple is the best. See, what a smooth operator. See that entry just glided perfectly onto topic. I definitely like stronger whiskies in general, and that's why I liked this one. Yes, it's definitely promising, but whatever you drink in the end, it all boils down to your own taste, and I assure you, Mr. Rain, my sense of taste is very refined. What type of whiskey do you like? I like the stronger ones. A man after my own heart. He tugged at his tie to loosen it a little. You know why I'm here. I want to make you an offer. I'm listening. Good, listen closely. Times are changing and so is the balance of the world. Soon, instead of a fractured world, we will see a more united world. There is us, Ato, against them. I want you by our side, the winning side. I think there is much we can achieve together and you have shown me the proof. Right, so even though I desperately want to join Ato and would give just about anything to do it, I am going to play trying to get as much off him as I can in order to, if he's, if he's going to play such a weak hand, I'm going to capitalise, right? I'm going to ask for 100% of everything that I can get. A friend of Lesbia is our friend as well. If you accept, I would like to extend you a warm welcome to Ato as a full member state. This is, of course, comes with a lot of privileges and responsibilities. In Ato, we protect each other. We have a mutual defence clause in the case of war. Yeah, that's why I'm just signing up. Join us, Mr. Rain, and you'll have the entire backing of Ato. Soldiers, jet fighters, warships, whatever you like. During peacetime, you will see the efforts even more. Our combined production output will benefit both Swordland and Ato. We will have free trade zone agreements, free visa access, investments, you name it. All I ask in return is mutual loyalty to one another in the pact. The Swordish Armed Forces will be a member of the Ato military structure. Its branches, uh, all branches, be it Air, Navy, Army, will collaborate with the Alliance Network. We will provide assistance and training for free. Our armies will learn how to fight together and be stronger than ever in the face of the millennialist threat. Let's make history here tonight. What do you say? I accept join Ato. Is that all you're asking for? I was expecting more demands. I assure you we can hand out just fine. Uh, thank you for your offer. However, we currently have no plans for to enter Ato. Option number five. I'm interested. What can you give me? All right. I. I accept, Mr. Walker. That's what I'd like to hear. We stand up and shake hands. Welcome to Ato and welcome home. Cheers to newfound partnerships. Fantastic. Now it's starting to taste even better. Let's go upstairs, Mr. Rain. We have much to discuss. But more importantly, we need to celebrate. Achievement unlocked. United against communism. Besides, I have a few more dance moves to show off. What a prick. Alright. Fantastic. Administration announces Swordland's ATO membership. I'm surprised that I could just, you know, do that. Just unilaterally as the president go, yeah, we're joining ATO. Bang, here's an alliance. I would have thought that I would have had to negotiate with other parties and get it through the assembly and all that kind of stuff. But, I mean, it's the right move anyway. Militarily, ATO will now have substantial power over the decision-making of Swordish armed forces, which justifiably was not and will not be welcomed by many officials from the army. Yeah, that is a downside. All right, geopolitical. Swordland joins ATO. 
President Walker's Swordland visit bore fruit as President Rain has announced the Swordland will be joining the ranks of ATO. The historic moment has been welcomed warmly by the member states of ATO as they congratulated Swordland. President Rain's lesbian counterpart, Prime Minister Alvarez, has called Swordland's joining to ATO the best thing to happen in Eastern Merkapur in the last century. Hell yeah! Over the span of the next couple of years, Swordland will economically, militarily and diplomatically integrate with the rest of the pact. Although the membership comes with a myriad of responsibilities, the changes will improve Swordland as a whole in almost every respect. On the other side of the world, the leader of CSP, Chairman Malenyev, called the Swordland's ATO membership a threat to the stability of the world, while Chancellor Hegel refrained from making a comment. That is an excellent sign. Hmm... All right, lads. Fantastic. Finally, how many videos are we in? 23, 24 videos in, and I'm finally, <laughs> we've done exactly what we were set out to do. Call with Evelyn Vectern, residence of the President of Swordland. All right, let's uh, set it down on a high note, eh, lads? Uh, what am I doing here? <laughs> All those notes. That's right. Okay. Save and exit. Nice one. Alright, um, likely there will be a fair amount of waiting until the next one as well. Um, I might get one out tomorrow, potentially, one of these vids, but what with the construction going on at the house and all of that kind of thing, it's either noisy or I'm just absolutely smashed. Uh, exhausted, I mean.